This is a bit more flexible. That's wild. Today I'm going to be telling you about nylon. Why should you listen to me? I think I know a little bit about nylon. There's all different types. There's nylon six, which is, you know, it's like a sponge and it, it warps a lot. This is nylon six and it's got glass fiber in it. High temp nylon. This nylon no one labeled. But what we're talking about today, thank you very much. There's nylon six, nylon six, six, nylon 11, and nylon 12, PA12. Why are there so many nylons? Now PA6 is what everyone's used to using for the most part. What we have before you is nylon 12. Nylon 12 is the number 12, which is six and six, okay? There's PA11, no one knows how that's made. That's mysteries out. It's just farmed from the earth. Pretty sure it's just a result of God. Technically, nylon 12 is the most real nylon. It's got longer molecular chains. PA6, shorter molecular chains. Cheaper to make because it's simpler to make, but it loves to warp and it loves to absorb water. We all know how bad nylon is with absorbing water. Nylon 12 is much better at that. And it prints better. It's technically more dimensionally accurate and it doesn't want to warp as much as nylon 6s. That's a huge benefit, but one of the downsides is it also has a slightly lower usable temperature and it's more flexible. Uh, you're gonna wanna use PA6 for something that you gotta be hitting with a hammer that's really gonna take a beating. These parts in nylon 12, these are brake cooling ducts to be installed on a 350Z. These need to be strong, but they are not gonna be beat around, hit with a hammer. Just default profile settings in this part is gorgeous. The main benefits are it's gonna be easier to print, less warping, not quite as strong, but much easier to work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Is that true? McLaren has been running PA12 parts? Mm -hmm. You see, get in here. Matt. Yes. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Why is it called nylon 12? I don't know. It has longer molecular chains. Oh. So that's why it's better at absorbing, not absorbing water. So technically PA6 can absorb 3% of its volume as water, right? Okay. 3 percent's a lot. Yes. But PA12, is more about, what? 0 0.5, that's six times less water absorption. And that's a big deal because if you've ever worked with nylon, because most people have worked with nylon six, you will know that if you sneeze, you have to dehydrate it to get a good print. Little known fact, the more times you thermally cycle these materials, they do tend to break down a little bit. If you ever have nylon that becomes incredibly brittle because you've heated it so many times, it's, that's what's gonna happen. It's where nylon 12 comes in. A lot easier to print in general. Both of these parts were just straight up default profile. Default profile on the what? 22 IDEX, the best machine ever. That's why I own one. That's my machine, that's mine. Hey, you YouTubers that were commenting, give Cole a 22. Oh, yeah. Here you go, man. Yeah. Got your own 22. Yeah. Special edition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the Tantrum Edition. I'm the Tantrum. I named myself that because I saw a speedboat named the Tantrum, and I was like, that's f***ing tight. <laughs> I printed this particular part with no supports for these overhangs, and it did pretty well. We'll have to see closer than that. Here's an example. I left the parts, the supports on that part, but this was very easy to print, completely unattended. Just showed up the next day, and it was done because I trusted the machine and the material. Here's the thing, nylon 12 is more expensive and nylon six kind of outperforms it in a lot of ways. We're talking nylon six is 190 Celsius it can handle, nylon 12 is more like 175. But the benefits to nylon 12 are, it's more expensive and it's a bit more flexible. I'll be honest with you, I don't really get it. Nylon six is fine for me. This is a bit more flexible, but nylon six can take more impact, has better impact resistance. It just depends what you're doing. If I was doing a giant part that would take days, I would absolutely choose nylon 12. It's more dimensionally stable, less likely to warp, and it doesn't want to absorb water. So I would trust that spool over three days still be okay, not seeing a visible quality difference throughout the part. McLaren uses nylon 12 
in their F1 car. Let's Str talk about that. Yeah, McLaren's strategic partner, Stratasys, has been their 3D printing partner for, I think, almost 10 years now, maybe more. McLaren is using both Nylon 12 and Nylon 6 in their F1 program in a variety of different use cases. They're actually using it on the car for aero pieces, under the car, ducts and whatnot, custom tooling. Another big thing they actually use it for is if you've seen an F1 race, you see all those cooling fans, leaf blowers basically attached to the cars at the start of every race and also when they pit as well to cool the car. And because the bodywork is changing on damn near a race by race basis, those oh. openings aren't exactly the same. By 3D printing them, they're saving so much time and money because they could just take the CAD, make a new duct, print it. You, they print these at the racetrack even because they Stratasys yeah. brings a couple machines with them at every race. So you could just do this track side. Another thing they're also using this for is That's for cool. um, protective pieces for their wheel guns and other stuff like that. So they're finding ways to use Nylon 12 and Nylon 6 pretty much in ways to just help create little tools along with aero pieces to just help with day-to-day -day operations. Yeah, because this stuff is strong and it can stand up to the wheel guns, you know, getting dropped, thrown yep. around, impact. That's perfect for nylon. The ability to use both of those different materials for different aspects of the car on the fly is really cool. Yeah, and it's a material you can print at home pretty much. If you have a machine with a heated chamber, you tend to get better results with the layer adhesion. Look, it's not that complicated. The bottom line is basically nylon 12 is the superior material if you need dimensional stability, repeatability, like I said earlier, giant parts. PA6 is still very good. It has a higher usable temp, very rigid. I don't think you'll get close, but these parts are absolutely stunning. If I were to sell a product that I 3D printed, mm -hmm. I would choose 12 over six. Yeah, this part's fantastic. You'd sell that. And people do sell these. There's a lot of people that have 22s that are pretty much printing car parts and intakes mainly in carbon fiber nylons. It's something we're gonna do with my car, actually. What are we doing? We're making some aero pieces for the car. Well, we have those. Which car? Talk uh, about your Z? My, no, no, for my Type R. Oh. We could put this on the Z. That's why I printed them. I might as well use them. Yeah. Let's see. Put them on. Zero warping. And it's a big part. Now, this is what I'm concerned about. Let's see. That's the only problem I have with this material is like PETG where it likes to stick to itself. And you can see how flexible this stuff actually is. Nylon 6 wouldn't really do that. It's the interface layer. It'll look yeah. good. That printed just fine. So I did one side of the part with all of these crazy sports and the other side without them. You can see the interface there and compared to that. That's zero support and, you know, you can get away with that. Why don't we like burn them and twist them and blow them up and yeah. see what they actually can do and get some numbers. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay guys, get ready to watch a graph while I talk at you. Here we go, X and Y specimen. How will it do? Nylon 12 is a bit more flexible. Let's see if it allows and gives a bit more than nylon six. Still going. Goodness gracious. Bam, 3208.260. Oh, As usual, we do a second specimen to verify the results. Just over 3,000 with the last one. 18, 19, come on. Let's tear some plastic. And hopefully this one's a bit stronger. Oh yeah, better, bang, there it is. Now it's time for the Z specimens, always weaker. These are printed straight up and down on the build plate so that we can ascertain the layer adhesion in the Z. 1179, always weaker, that's to be expected. And for this second example, just to verify the results once again, up and up it goes. Where it stops, you can pretty much guess. I mean, you can make a logical deduction of where it stops. Probably any second. Two, bam, exactly. 1200 for the Z, not too shabby, that's Newton's. Now, we will test some torsion. We're gonna test the torque. I'm gonna do this one pretty quick and then the other one slow. 
Oh. Bro. Yeah, it's way more flexible. 9.6 Newtons. Wow, that's a nice break. All right, nine point something, six, it's in the video. Nine point six, exactly nine point six. That's cool, that is consistency. And once again, it broke beautifully. All right, nine point six, two times. Now, oh, it's heavy. As per usual, we will see what happens when this stuff burns. I will hold this propane torch one inch away for five seconds. And then we will see a couple things. I want to see how it behaves when it melts. I want to see how long it takes to stop smoking. Self-extinguishing is good. And I want to see, you know, if it drips. So bummer. That's going to keep going like a candle wick. So I guess we'll just allow that to happen. We got to see what happens. It's going to start dripping molten hot plastic. Nylon, like I said in the past, very, very cool material. I wouldn't want to use it in the cockpit if there were a fire of some, I mean, this thing is literally, literally like a candle wick. And that's a lot of toxic smoke. That's still on fire. Can you see it? That's wild. Toxic. It can be toxic if, if it's going to be exposed to things like that. And so it seems maybe like a bit of a ridiculous, you know, ask to be like, let's see what happens when it's actually lit on fire. But you have to understand that a lot of what we do is for aerospace, you know, the Air Force wants to know what happens, you know, if it's subjected to fire. That's why they don't use nylon. Pretty much the only thing they use is Ultima 9085, which just will immediately extinguish. It also won't drip like that. It just degrades. It's just the uh, superficial surfaces that burn off, really. Turns into basically carbon, uh, much safer. Still going. I didn't time this, but we'll put a timer on screen. Ultim is like it self extinguishes when you go crazy like that after like two, three seconds. This thing is still going. If you're gonna light it on fire, don't use nylon. I'm gonna take a step away and we're gonna turn on the fan because it's very toxic in here. Uh, like and subscribe and buy a 22. I'll, blow, I'll bring in my air compressor and we'll blow the sh out of these things.